Yes, um, please. Recording today's DNI meeting on February the 25th. So the conversation about how to involve people who cannot make the call was started by Emma because she can no longer make the calls, but she's still very interested in the work we're doing and participating and contributing. And this is something chaos has always been um, trying to figure out how we can have these weekly meetings and move our work forward, but have it open so that if you are not on the call, you can still participate. And so the weekly minutes or the, the minutes from the meetings is important to transfer what we talk about into the asynchronous email space. But then when it comes to what work needs to be done and encouraging people to actually participate, um, we had some ideas in the past for how to do that, but we've not consistently implemented those. And that's what this agenda item is for, to talk about ways to do it, or even just concretely say, okay, these are things over the next week, if someone wants to work on it, please do. If I recall, the prior discussion was about, you can tell me I'm wrong, but trying to include people in the repository through uh, some, some events that might encourage people to post issues or, hi Lars, or um, be involved in a pull request. Is that right? Does anybody remember that? Yeah. At one point, we had decided to include in the meeting minutes one or two issues from the issue tracker that anyone could pick up. Mm -hmm. Like really simple, low overhead issues. Yeah. I mean, I still like that idea. And I think we should also just, in, you know, encourage people to pick stuff up in the issue tracker on GitHub too, because there's loads of stuff in there that really, really anybody could do. Yeah. But um, but sometimes people need a little extra encouragement. Sometimes people feel like you know because they they don't attend the meetings, maybe they're not part of the core team, maybe they shouldn't just start doing stuff. Yeah. And so I think it helps to actually explicitly encourage that behavior. Because we do want we do want people who aren't in the meetings to participate. What about like an issue tag? It's like anyone, everyone. Yeah, I like that idea. Because even being in the meetings now for a limited time, I you know I didn't necessarily know how, to what level or where or when to jump in. You know, I would say any issue that's not already assigned to someone else is is fair game, and there are loads of those. And I think Garrick has tagged some of them with. Good first issue, which is a good place for new people to start, and that can help. Okay. Yeah, I like that too. We should also remember to continue to tag things with good first issue. It's always um, uh, something we need to keep keep on top of, I think. Maybe um, would it be worth a step further? Like, so tagging it with, what is the tag? Good first issue. Um, but then in the issue, saying this as a text, just a reminder, <laughs> we encourage anyone and everyone to participate in this issue or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. It's just a sentence. We could even send an email to the mailing list occasionally, you know, maybe every other week or something with, you know, here are yep. maybe the top three to five issues that we'd love it if someone would pick them up. Yes. That like might that. get some attention. That sounds like a good one. Honestly, it just, it probably just sounds like what it comes down to is just the working group doing these kind of things and publicizing on a regular basis, even if it, the regular basis is every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to focusing on issues, mm -hmm. 
Another idea is to take a topic that we started to discuss or wanted to discuss and start a separate mail thread, email thread mm -hmm. to talk about online. And then sure, we can repeat what we already talked about during the meeting. And I encourage you all to then participate and voice your opinions because that might draw some more participants from people who couldn't make the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's or, a good idea. Yeah, or you at least get the ideas via email. And maybe you do draw them into a future meeting. Especially for things that are, I don't know, maybe a little bit, a little bit tricky that need a little more discussion than what we had time for in the meeting. I think mm -hmm. those are really good candidates for a bigger mailing list discussion with maybe some more people involved. Are you thinking just in the DNI mail list or the whole uh, larger list? I would say the larger list. I don't know. The DNI mailing list, I think, was mostly for us to use for like work in process things, meeting notifications. Okay. Um, but I think if we're trying to draw more people in, then yeah. we should be sending those emails to the main chaos list. Yeah, the main chaos list has about 120 people. I haven't like looked at any duplicates or anything like that. But it would, to your point, it would be a much larger group of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, um, these I think are some really clear, actionable ideas that we could start doing. Any other thoughts or? There's a comment in the Zoom chat about finding all the mailing lists and meetings. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I see that from Rai, yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah, and I'm actually, sure yeah. I don't... The, the main, if you go to the main mailing list page, like this, the DNI mailing list is not on that page, right? So I, I discovered that mailing list by accident. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, the DNI mailing list is kind of hidden. That's true. Yep, kind of the same for me, actually. Okay. Oh, interesting. Good. Yep. Yeah. I, and Kevin, there's, a, just joined. So. there's a participate page on the Chaos um, website, which is actually the page that has all of the details it has the it has the dni mailing list i guess it doesn't have the other mailing list hmm. it has some of the mailing lists all right Maybe well, we right now, only dni dni is the only work group that has its own mailing list there's the main mail list but gmd doesn't have one okay and i don't think common has one does it I don't think I no, that. I just use the main one for the common working group. Yeah, so everything should be on that participate page. I think we probably need to do a better job of highlighting that and getting people there because that does seem to be the place that has all of the useful information. Although speaking as a bit of an outsider, um, it would be nice if the description of that mailing list made that a little clearer. For one thing in particular, at the bottom of that block of text, it says the Chaos Board Mail Archive, which made me immediately think this is not the case for me. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, good. Uh, I see the point. We can continue to work on, on this. Kevin, maybe. Uh, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Kevin, maybe we just revisit this page a little bit. I mean, I think the structure is mostly there. Uh, yeah, it needs a little. It needs a little work. And maybe a TLC as well, um, because uh, you know, it's at least for me, it breaks oddly. So um, it, I don't even, I didn't even notice that there was a below the fold um, past the kind of main mailing list discussion. Okay. So wait, why didn't you see that? Uh, it's below the fold, um, like so. Uh, Sorry, it's an old newspaper term, but it means like uh, it's in the browser window. It's um, below the bottom. I see. You have, to, you have to scroll down. Yeah. There you go. 
English for <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> All right, so maybe we can move some of that up, make it more obvious at the top. Yeah, and I think what we should probably do is look at combining the join the mailing list section and the how to participate in chaos sections. Yeah. So it's not and so clean boring. clean those up and make them a little more a little more action oriented. Are we um are we talking now about the participate section on yes. the website? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is helpful. Thank you. Great. Do we have do we have anybody that wants to take an action to do that? I like to assign action items. Well, I can do it with Kevin because okay. Kevin is kind of the web maintainer, and Kevin, I'll speak on your behalf. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm certainly happy to uh, to take a look at it and do do some more work there. Uh, okay. I agree. I agree. It needs a little love. Uh, additionally, I will say that all of those all of those modules are uh, easily editable. Uh, from the GitHub repository. So uh, anyone is welcome to put in a fork to, uh, to edit those. Yeah. Yeah, we can do a pull request to edit them. But I think, Kevin, if we decide to merge the two top boxes, you'll have to help us with that because that's Certainly. a stru structural change. Cool. How about Kevin and I, you and I can take that on, Kevin, for next week's call and just kind sure. of show where it's at. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. That's that's actually super helpful. It's one of those pages that I know exactly where everything is and what I'm looking for. Um, and now that I look at it again, it's not intuitive. And it's a big improvement over what we had before, too. So it's moving in the right <laughs> direction, at least. Yeah, thank you. Do we, in this in the spirit of assigning more action items, do we have do you have anybody who wants to take an action item or two? on the ways for people not on the call to contribute? Like somebody agreeing to send out something every couple of weeks or somebody that wants to, I don't know, do any of the things that we talked about here? I don't mind doing like the good first issue email update maybe every two weeks and then it sort of will just jog my memory too to potentially dig in on those <laughs> as an, you know, a new person to the group. Cool. And we can also help in this meeting to um, help figure out which uh, issues should go in that email if you have any That'd questions. Yeah. Thing. Every two weeks, just have that as an agenda item. Yeah, exactly. Please. It's and always it's easier if you have someone responsible for it because then they'll remember to do it. Right. And just to clarify, that would go to the I mailing list, not the overall chaos mailing list, or would it go to the overall? The overall. Got it. Okay. okay. Any other volunteers on those items, or...? I think with some of the changes and, and an update, that will be a good start. I can take on the conversation part, and if we have a conversation during the call that I think we can continue further on the overall chaos mailing list, then I will send out an email and start that conversation. Got it. Okay. Great. Okay, do we want to close out this discussion? Yeah, I think it's good. Great. Good for me. Okay, we will jump into action items. Um, I believe Daniel said he was not able to attend this call, but um, with his action item to talk to Nicole, I believe Nicole's on, so I don't know if you and Daniel connected I last uh, We didn't. Which... Um, 
is is this for OSLF or or which um which one are we talking about? Yes, it was for OSLS, and it was. Or I know that you had taken a, a lead in putting together that abstract, and I just provided some minimal support. And uh, we wanted to know if you wanted to be the moderator or the panelist. And I believe Daniel also said that if someone from the Hyperledger team wanted to take his spot, since they are now a uh, pilot project for us, a use case, um, that he'd be open to that. And there was someone on the Hyperledger team interested in doing that. Um, so we just wanted to talk through uh, the OSLS panel and some logistics there. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, so I'm happy to do either one. Okay. Um, whatever, whatever the team needs. Um, Got it. Yeah, and I was wondering that too over the weekend is, um, uh, yeah, prepping for that uh, that panel. Great. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some prep needed. Okay, so you're happy to do either one. And um, the person who was willing to take Daniel's spot was uh, Jamie Smith, who is the CMO of the Linux Foundation and working on the um, – Hyperledger project and DCI efforts within the LF. So um, rather, I'd like to just confirm with Daniel by email that he's comfortable with that though and he's open to that switch. And I wanted to make sure that Nicole and others were comfortable with that too. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah. I am. Okay. And then right. Georg, Georg was gonna take my place on that panel, because he's, okay. you know, so. Okay, then I will um, confirm with Daniel on that one point, and then we can get the the bios and information updated on the website. And I can take care of that part, working with my okay. colleague. Thanks. And then Nicole, should we put a planning meeting on the books maybe for late this week or early next week? Yes, and I am happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, that would be awesome. So then who's on the panel? I suppose I could look. I know I was going to go back and look too. <laughs> I think I was. <laughs> unchanged. <laughs> I think I, I am an unchanged, I believe, but okay. happy to, yeah. Program schedule. And Georg and Amy and Nicole, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yep. So Sarah, Don, and now Georg mm -hmm. and Nicole. And then the person you mentioned from Jamie Smith, yes. A woman. Jamie. Okay. Oh Jamie. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, one of the things we'll have to talk about in our prep meeting is um, strategies for fitting this many people on a panel in a 30-minute slot. Right. Yeah. That's going to be a challenge, but we'll, we'll, we'll strategize. We'll figure it out. That's the role of the moderator. <laughs> Do <you think? laughs> Go, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, great. And then in terms of setting up this meeting at Chaos for the Hyperledger team, that's underway. And Rye, I know that um, you might have seen that over the weekend I put together an email just to have the Hyperledger team meet in internally, and then we can get um, that scheduled for the uh, – within, you know, Half Moon Bay, that meeting scheduled. And I know you, Brian, unfortunately, will not be able to be there in person, but perhaps we can even have dial-in option. And I know um, your colleague, I believe, Salona, is interested and able to attend, attend in person, correct, Brian? Yes, that's correct. Salona will be attending. Great. And, Brian, do you want to give just a little bit of an update since you're here in terms of, um, you know, the discussions you've had you know, with, with me and then with Salona and others in the, on the team about the receptiveness to participate in chaos? Uh, well, uh, the, 
the above the fold remark would be, uh, we want to do it very much. Um, yep. <laughs> and uh, we are working uh, like right now to uh, finalize a, uh, you know, to get everything going in the same direction. We have yes. uh, some impetus to uh, kind of uh, split, you know, less wood behind more arrows. And uh, internally mm -hmm. we are working to focus on on you know using chaos and and helping to evolve chaos to be you know more uh supportive of our goals so that we mm -hmm. you know we get what we need and chaos gets what they need so right and i think that to. yeah i think that will be some of the discussion in that meeting absolutely great cool yeah thanks great Okay, so that will probably be coming this week in terms of an invite for the actual meeting at Half Moon Bay. So that will be sent around. Do you think you would do that during, Is it would it be that Friday? Do you have any sense? Um, well, I guess that's a good question for this group if there is a better day or window for people. And I don't know what when people are sort of taking off or how early they are coming in. Well, we have the board meeting on Friday, so I don't know that Friday we could morning. do it on Friday. Yep. Yeah, Friday morning, like basically just morning is the board meeting. Yeah. But I would think a lot of people are probably leaving. If they're not on the chaos board, they're probably leaving on Friday morning. Right. So yeah, I was aiming for, I was thinking Thursday. T Tuesday's a tight day for me, but I was thinking sort of Thursday at some point. Yeah, so I, I yeah, that works. That works. Okay. Yeah. And I'll try to send around a few options and I'll look obviously we won't do it during the panel and things like that. Awesome. Yeah, that'd yeah. Be good. Okay. And then I think Daniel was going to reach out to Uber because we're trying to have a general um, sort of just chaos D and I working group meeting in person there too. And I believe is that the Uber connection to invite them to that meeting? I'm not remembering this action item specifically. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember either. We'll just leave it open. Until okay. Can join. Okay, great. Um, and then there was the request to put together an intern description. Um, if we were to try to source interns through different programs and organizations that help do that for the open source communities and just wondering if there's been any progress there. Yeah, Georg, you wanna? You're muted. There. Yep, I was just looking up where we put the project description. It's in issue 166. So I also sent out an email to the mailing list to ask for feedback. And Langdon is on the call because um, we also exchanged emails that maybe Red Hat had some way of funding an intern. Should we finish the action items and then come back to that one? Because I think Langdon put outreachy on the agenda. So maybe we should talk about that in more detail after we get through okay. the rest of the action items. Yes. So I guess then in terms of that action item, it was done. <laughs> it was produced. <laughs> okay. So. And apologies, I am going to have to drop since I had a hard stop at a, a meeting that's come up. But um, I don't know if anyone else wants to resume with the facilitation. Yeah, I, have to I, can, I can tag team. I'm going to be here. The I'll be here the whole time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Lang Langdon just said he's dropping off and reconnecting. Okay. Um, so the other action item, Daniel was going to create a pull request to add people who contributed um, at Chaos Con as contributors. I have not seen that. <laughs> I think that's still open. Um, Nicole, how are you doing with Ben on the DNI readme file? Good. I just posted um, in the chat window uh, where I am with the content. Um, so I've moved the, um, the content into, just in the shared doc, I've moved the content into um, 
the uh, the outline that was that was proposed and finalized in one of our earlier meetings, and um, uh, wanted to wanted to see if people wanted to comment there. Otherwise, I will um, open a uh, pull request for that. Cool. Um, does anybody have anything and I think else? I'm gonna, oh, sorry. I think no, I'm going to go back through the, um, the contributing section, given our conversation this morning, and make sure that um, all of the ways to contribute and get started are um, are covered there. Cool. So I would say that everybody on the call has the action item to have another look at this document and provide feedback to Nicole so that she can get this into a PR and get it get it submitted. Um, how about we create a separate email thread for this? That's an excellent idea. Nicole, since you're the lead on this, do you mind posting an email to the overall chaos mailing list to start the conversation? Sure, I'd be happy to. Cool. So I think, and then... Uh, so I think we're through the through the action items. So the next, um, I'm gonna rearrange the agenda and do the um, outreachy discussion. So Langdon, how are you? How are you doing? How's your connection? Better? Much. <coughs> okay. Yeah, you don't all sound like robots now. Um, <laughs> Great. Which, you know, it may or may not be a good thing. Um, so, uh, so I. Got the description, good description. Um, the and I went and talked to some people, and there's potentially um, a solution there um, from a money perspective. However, the question I was given by my boss, which I thought was reasonable, and I come back to you too, is that basically I don't know how many of you've read the description, but there's kind of um, uh, three different kind of categories of gig there. Um, and the first two are so project ideas, so they're actually project ideas one, two, and three. The first two have a lot of overlap with the project um, that we are spinning up with Boston University. And that has um, four interns assigned to it. Um, one who you guys have met, um, Manny, um, and then three more that we're hiring this week. Um, two of them possibly are women, in fact, assuming that all three of them take it, which obviously we don't know yet. Um, so what I'm kind of wondering is, is that sufficient? Do you guys want to get more involved in this project um, and leverage that to do project ideas one and two? Or is there a really strong reason? Um, actually, it's really... Yeah, for this semester, we're really thinking one and two, and then three being a little bit later, um, but actually doing all three eventually. Uh, and rather than having a separate effort um, and separate mentorship, et cetera, uh, for a proper quote unquote outreachy intern. So with the Boston University project, if I understood that correctly, um, just, just to rehash for everyone who is not as involved, uh, the goal there is to have students from the university engage in diversity and inclusion efforts. And I think they had decided to, on two metrics that they wanted to focus on, um, communication inclusivity and pull requests, if I remember correctly. Correct. Um, so, yes. And specifically, so it's about augmenting... <laughs> Sorry. augmenting um, either Augur or um, the other one that I just blanked on. Um, we were actually thinking that we would implement um, the, the implementation, we would implement uh, kind of data collection, et cetera, for Augur around those two metrics as a getting started, um, and then try to work through the visualization we we're actually kind of wondering if we could actually use both pieces of software, and I can't believe I'm blanking the other one. Um, and Grimoire surface Lab? Them Is that what you're talking about? Which one? Grimoire Lab for Tergia? 
Yeah, 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 for sure. That's it. Um, and, you know, but basically try to actually have them work more together. We're not 100% sure that's the right answer because we haven't dug into it enough. Um, but the focus being get those two new metrics actually being collected into Augur um, and work through analysis later. So get, you know, get the data going and then, um, and then if we get time this semester, which we might, uh, start working through analysis on it uh, to kind of try to give some feedback on what it actually means. So that's kind of what we're thinking. Um, does that make sense? It, I explain it, it properly? It does. So this is with project, I'm sorry, this is with project idea number two, really, about the technical aspects of metrics, implementing DNI metrics and software, listening to you talk. Oh, so maybe it was two and three, and I just misremembered. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And three actually is the data visualization too. Right. Yeah. 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 So it was two, two and three, not one and two. My bad. Okay. And then uh, I, you said there were there were particular metrics. I'm sorry if I missed so it. The two we kind of think we can probably do some damage on um, were uh, an analyzing communication mechanisms, and then you know, so basically collecting uh, data about how communication happens within a particular project. And then I'm trying hard not to say, you know, and then make a separate step of analyze those metrics for inclusivity. Um, so first is collect the data, then figure out what, you know, what it means. So that's one. And then the other one is to collect data about um, PRs or pull requests on projects. Um, and then again, as a second step, analyze what it means from an inclusivity perspective. Okay. And then I guess another question is, so the intern, this intern, these four interns that you're gonna be working with potentially, would it be through the school semester or is it over summer? Or Correct, is it no, this semester. So this is work study kind of work. So um, I think we said, no, I'm blanking. We either said six or eight hours per student per week. Um, so it's actually quite a, a fair number of hours. Um, and Manny is more um, going to be the project leader. I'm going to be more of an advisor. Um, anybody on this call who wants to be an advisor can also participate. Um, and, you know, my, my advice is mostly be around technical implementation and who to talk to to get um, uh, you know, good, you know, to figure out what the right metrics are, you know, like, okay y'all um and yeah so but then the so we'll actually have probably three person worth of work for about a little bit shy of a day a week um per person so three you know three uh three days a week for the next seven or eight or whatever it is till yep. till, till mid -May or whatever mm -hmm. and then we want to do another one in the summer as well um with obviously more like fuller time, if not full time, from probably a couple to four um, uh, interns for the summer, and then kind of the same construct that we have now next fall. So, I mean, we want this to be an ongoing project. Maybe, we, you know, hopefully we'll, we're trying to look at, we want to give the students something they accomplish on each intern block, right? So that's why we want to keep it focused on like two metrics for the first semester. And maybe we find out that, oh, it's really easy and we can actually do four or whatever, but we want to make sure we scope it enough that they have something they walk away from and they have material, you know, results. Cool. What other? So now that we revisited the Boston University project, the intern that we are looking for, um, can focus on different metrics. There, we have so many different metrics that I'm sure there might be overlap in what needs to be done, but we have so many metrics that uh, it would still be good to have an intern work on other aspects of the project. So I definitely agree with that. I mean, no question. My concern was the overhead uh, involved in managing that person, right? So if you know, if we have three people who need advice, um, is adding a fourth going to add more overhead? Um, because we're still hoping that, you know, this, this group is going to help be mentors to that project. Um, 
And so my concern was if adding another person to that mix um, who may or may not overlap, sure, um, would be too much, would require too much quote unquote management overhead. That was my worry. Okay, that makes sense to me now. Yeah, that not that there is an endless amount of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, but feel free to push back. I mean, we have another couple of weeks before, um, you know, we need to really make a strong decision, I think. Um, you know, but this was this was our opinion. And so what is, uh, I'm just not plugged into, uh, like, timetables for, for classes. What What's the duration of this internship? So it's like, I think there's like, there's some, there's like seven or eight weeks left of the semester. Um, so it would be actually we, we want to kick it off like this Friday, um, okay. and then you know it's, it's seven or eight weeks I can't remember either, okay. but it's like mid May ish. Okay. And then um, what are the next steps after that? Is this a program that you kind of do on a regular basis? Right. So this is what one of the things, and we haven't kind of done the marketing side of it that much, but mm -hmm. we want. This, so Red Hat has made um, a relationship with Boston University. It's called the Red Hat Collaboratory. We want this to be one of our. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good word like signature projects with that collaboratory. So it's something that will be going on for hopefully several years. Um, and, you know, it's at the same level as some of the other projects we have, which is like the Massachusetts Open Cloud and uh, the CRIS, which is a, a medical um, computation network. Um, and so we want, you know, we want this to be flagship, I guess is a good mm -hmm. word for it. So we want this to be something that is ongoing and running and survives, survives the uh, students uh, turning over. Um, you know, so this isn't one student's project. This is a collaboratory project that we currently have students assigned to and the and manny who some of you have met um is actually only a sophomore so we've got another couple of years out of him uh to really establish it cool so we could um we could try it with the three interns see what the management overhead looked like with an opportunity to maybe add another one if we needed one that's like kind of next, one thing. Next, yeah, like next semester, I guess. Right, right. And the summer is obviously different, you know, particularly in the U.S. Um, if you're unfamiliar with summer or like internships in the U.S. Um, tend to be almost full time in the summer uh, and tend not to extend into the school year, um, you know, with some variability on that. Uh, so we should be able to make even more progress this summer. And I don't I know the group at Red Hat that's responsible for the collaboratory wants to make an investment in those interns for the summer. Um, we, and we already actually had a meeting about it last week already um, to discuss how that might look. Um, so we don't know what the body count looks like yet again, because we're not 100% sure what the management overhead is. So we're still working through that. But. So the, the way that I see it is this is just a huge positive <laughs> all around. I hope so. So. <laughs> so, I mean, any 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 way to connect with with students, any way to connect with organizations, any way to connect DNI with with software, ways to think through the metrics. Particularly when when I heard communication, I know that that's one of the focus areas of DNI. I mean, to me, it, to me, it's um, kind of checking a lot of boxes in terms of. Um, addressing the complexities of thinking through the metrics, which is great. So that's kind of my, my two cents. And, and I, I hear you on um, not wanting to add too many students, just because management is tricky sometimes. <laughs> Especially when we don't know what we're doing. Um, you know, you know, y'all might have done, you know, a bunch of stuff with Augur or with doing these projects, or whatever, um, but we haven't done it. So that's my worry. Um, yep. And, you know, if, if something like an outreach intern was purely focused on say marketing, you know, and doing blog posts and write-ups and I don't know, even doing things like uh, sending out the, uh, every two weeks, here's some bugs you can work on. Um, the overlap would be low enough that it would, it might be okay. Um, but I, if we, if we have them working on technology, I think it's also going to be more challenging. Mm -hmm. Georg, did you have a comment? Looks like you were going to make a comment. 
No, based on what I've been hearing so far, um, I, I think we should see what the Boston University project turns out to be. And I, I think we have several people here on the call, me included, who would love to mentor and help them along and make sure they contribute back to the chaos project when they want to. Um, that, that's, that's my thoughts right now. So okay. um, adding another mentor, another intern, I think having three versus none is already a lot. And then having them all in the same project makes sense. And then next year, if you want to add more, we can, if you have the bandwidth, add more next year. That's my yeah, that's kind of always, It's like there's the opportunity to scale later, right? Um, I'm just hesitant to scale before we know what we're doing. Sure. Well, I have two comments. I can kind of, I don't like speaking on behalf of other people, but I'm going to. Um, so in the, in the, from the, um, kind of the software side, I'm fairly certain that, um, thanks Lars. I'm fairly certain that, um, folks of Augur and Grimoire Lab would be very open to having those conversations as to how you could potentially technically implement these metrics. So again, speaking on their behalf. Um, and then I guess it's a, one question is, it sounds like the interns would be um, supported via the relationship between Red Hat and EU, uh, which is completely cool. Is there is there a reason to not go through Outreachy for this, or is um, not per se? Um, it's just that we had already initiated it before I this see. conversation came up. Um, okay, you know. So again, you know, like attaching an outreach intern to the team would be perfectly viable, you know, okay. going forward. But again, I like if this just becomes, you know, is it three people, four people, five people. Um, but no, we had already initiated, we had already planned on um, doing this. Actually, we started working on putting this project together uh, basically the middle of the fall last year. I gotcha. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. That's fair. Cool. Thank you very much. I got to drop off because I got to go teach a class. <laughs> so, All right. Thanks, Matt. See you later. And thanks, Landon, for working with us on this. I, I really appreciate it. I know everybody else does, too. Cool. Um, so do you want to call this a final decision, or do you want me to go and take another pass at my boss? What do you think, Eric? Um, I or think you want to can come back to me? Wait to see what... Um, how the Boston University project evolves before we try to get more interns. So take it as a final decision for now, and we'll talk about it again once we have a better sense for how much time we're spending mentoring people. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. Um, anybody else have any items for the agenda? Because I think we just need to figure out next week's meeting facilitator and note taker unless anybody else has anything they want to talk about. Okay. So who wants to facilitate next week? And who would like to take notes? I would love to facilitate. I took notes the last two weeks. Cool. Oh, wait. I think I need to... I think... I need to check my schedule. I might not be there next week. <laughs> While you do that, is there anybody that would just love to take notes? I would, but um, <laughs> but next week is is going to be maybe problematic for me. So um, so I will hold off for now. Okay. Yeah, I will not be there next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're not going to be here. Nicole's not going to be here. Or Nicole's problematic may or may not be here. <laughs> not sure how, I'm not sure how to translate that. <laughs> well, I'll have, what, what that really means is I'll have a little eight-year-old next Monday morning. 
that I need to get to school. And um, so I'll probably be late to the meeting. So I don't, I don't want to volunteer and then not, not be there and have people wonder where I am. Okay. So I will volunteer to facilitate. Um, I'm going to recommend that maybe what we do at the beginning, if there's no one super eager to take notes, maybe I'll just ask again at the beginning of the next meeting and see if we can, because there's some people that aren't on the call that are probably, um, probably in the meeting who'd be willing to take notes. People like Daniel, for example. So I can, I can recruit a note taker as the first item on the agenda for the next week. Awesome. Thank you, Don. Yeah. And it could also be that uh, I'm, I'm good. My schedule is good and I actually am, am there. And at that point, I'd be thrilled to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Just going to add that to the agenda. All right. Uh, anything else before we wrap up? I think we had a really good meeting today. And I don't have anything else for right now. Yeah, I don't either. I thought it was a great meeting. And I'm excited about the intern. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're pretty. We're it's it, and the uh, the three candidates we got, we I uh, think are really good too. So hopefully they'll be awesome. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Do the interns, if you don't mind me asking, do they have uh, milestones or required uh, points at which they need to check in with us or? We haven't gotten that far yet. Um, we're going to do a kickoff meeting on Friday, um, and then we're going to start to figure out how we're going to approach the work. We do have um, a, a currently unreviewed, um, what do we call it, like a project plan or project description um, that uh, we're hoping to finalize by the end of the week as well. Um, so I think at least my hope was that Manny or myself, right, but most likely Manny would be providing an update to this meeting like every week um, just to kind of give it have some accountability in a sense from like a stand-up perspective of you know here's what we did last week here's what we're doing next week um, you know so that you you all would be informed but also you could give feedback at that point um, and we would like to work in some sort of demos because um, if you follow like agile uh, practices, I think demos are one of the most important parts where you can kind of show it to people who are stakeholders and they can kind of say, yes, this is good. No, this is terrible. Um, and, uh, and get feedback uh, in real time. So, but they're all students. They've never really, well, um, some actually have some uh, development work experience, um, but they may not have this kind of experience. So it's going to take us a little while to, to put everything together and deliver um, something that's you know, kind of consumable from the outside. Um, so I'd say, you know, Manny or I will definitely be, um, you know, here regularly, but I would say, you know, expect more, a better update in a couple of weeks. Cool. I'll put you on the agenda for next week for an update. If you have any, um, we can always remove it from the agenda if there's nothing, nothing new to talk about. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll have a plan by then. Like I said, we're going to try to kick off on Friday. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad it aligned. <clears throat> yeah, so are we. Thank you so much. Okay. With that, um, I think we're I think we're probably finished. Excellent. Thanks everyone. Have a great week. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.